today we are going to be looking at uh, the human ear so basically the ear is divided into three major parts outer ear the middle ear and then the inner ear sometimes when you are bringing a question you can bring a question with the middle ear only or you can bring a question with the inner ear only or the outer ear only or the outer ear and the middle ear or we can bring the whole structure and then we design questions from there Let's look at the structure of the ear the first part is uh, the outer ear we say that the outer ear comes from here to here as you see it here it is the function of the pinna basically it collects sound and directs it to the auditory canal we prefer calling it auditory canal than the ear canal so this sound in the ear, the auditory canal is being is sent to the tympanic membrane. Sometimes you call it eardrum, but you prefer calling it tympanic <coughs> membrane. There are three bones in the ear. The ear is has the the smallest bones in the body. So the first one is called the hammer, the anvil, and then the stirrup. But we prefer calling them the malleus, the incas, and then the steps or steps so these three bones we call them oscos the three bones found in the ear we call them oscos they are very important in amplifying the sound so these oscos they are attached to a window we have two, two kinds of windows in the ear we have what called the oval window and then we have the, the round window the oval window the way you hear it it is oval in shape and round and it's round in shape so the upper window is attached to the the, the last bone which is stepis stepis or the styra causes the vibration of the upper window and then the vibration creates a wave like message into the the liquid which is found here which called the endolymph the endolymph it takes information to a part called cochlea cochlea has the sensory cells for hearing these cells are very important in detecting the pressure so this endolymph sends the information to cochlea which has which has the sensory receptors which called the organ of cotton the organ of cotton stimulus into the nerve impulse and the impulse is sent to the brain hearing is the sense so it goes to cerebrum for interpretation via auditory nerves so there is another part of the ear which we call the semicircular canal the semicircular canals they contain what we call receptors for balance so this is the part which is responsible for balance so it has the mercury and the, the crystal for balance we will see the mechanism of balance and then as it goes the pressure goes in there is this part which called a round window for it it is very important in absorbing the excess pressure in the inner ear so if you look at this part it is in ear. so the round window is very important in absorbing the excess pressure in the inner ear and then we have this tube it joins to the mouth it's very important in equalizing pressure on the either side of the tympanic membrane like in someone receives a pressure here this like for example slap it may not cause the tympanic membrane to burst why because there is this tube which equalizes the pressure which is coming from outside and then it is being equalized so that uh, the tympanic membrane does not is not what is not damaged these are also these are the functions as we say that directs the sound wave to now this one takes the information to the tympanic membrane or the eardrum eardrum transmits the sound waves to so it goes on uh, like this part takes the information this this takes the information this this one amplifies the vibration and then the semicircular canal for balance to the canal to the brain the impulse and then the cochlea contains the organ of corti organ of corti as i talked about it it's very important for sound 
converting sound wave into into a nerve impulse. That's the stimulus into a nerve impulse. Then this is for pressure equalizes and releases the pressure in this in a, the, 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 the inner ear and then this transmits the sound wave to the inner ear. So basically you need to know the functions of each part so that when you are describing the process of hearing you are able to know that this part performs this, this part performs this. Once you know the function of each part then we will be able to know the functioning of the ear or the hearing and the balance. You connect the, you connect the part, one part to another. For example, the pinna connects it to ear canal or what you call the tympanic membrane, uh, or to the canal, the canal to the tympanic membrane like that until you reach the end. Get an example, Susan was sitting in the park and suddenly she heard a sound behind her calling her name. Describe how did she manage to hear the sound and to respond. So the sound calling her name, it will be collected and directed by the pinna to auditory canal. The auditory canal will transmit the sound to tympanic membrane. The tympanic membrane will vibrate causing the oscos to vibrate too. Amplifying the vibration. Or it depends on the how many marks is being how many marks are being given to that question. So you can say that the tympanic membrane will cause the malleus or the hammer to vibrate, the hammer will cause the incas or anvil to vibrate to, to, to vibrate to or to change the position. This transmits the vibration to stir up or the steps. This vibration is being magnified. The last bone that is the steps causes the over window vibrate. The over window vibration creates a wave, a vibration form of a wave into the endolymph. The endolymph takes, it causes the organ of corti to be stimulated, converting the sound vibration or sound wave into a nerve impulse which is sent to the brain. It's been sent to the brain, sent to cerebrum for interpretation via auditory nerves. Yeah, so basically uh, the excess pressure is being absorbed by the excess pressure in the inner ear is being absorbed by the around the window and then the team the station tube will help in equalizing pressure on the either side of the tympanic membrane. So basically from here to here from here as long as you know the part and function of each, then you will be able to know the hearing process. Uh, let's look at some of the questions. Part A is identified A and D. You have to know how to label them. A is pinna, D is semicircular canal. Write down letters only. You see, the question is saying letters only. Don't write anything else, don't write the name. Of the part which conducts sound wave towards the mirror ear. You know that this is the mirror ear. So which part is responsible? They don't want the name, they just want the letter. Just say B. The answer. And then number two, absorbs pressure from the inner ear. Where is the inner ear? It's the inner ear, but absorbs the pressure. So the answer will be G, which is around window, but they don't want the name, just want the letter. They are saying that ensure equal pressure on the either side of the tympanic membrane. We say that they, uh, they said that um, station tube is the one which equalizes the pressure on the either side of the tympanic membrane. So the answer will be F. Transmit vibration to inner ear. It, it, it transmits vibration to the inner ear. 
See, you need to know the part and the functions so that when they ask a question, you'll be able to know which part is that. So we say that over window is the one which transmits vibration to the inner ear. And then contains organ of corti. We say that organ of corti is found here. So the answer will be E. Let's look at the process of balance. It's being controlled by semicircular canal, this part. So balance is happening here in part D. So let's look at it, the process of balance. Uh, I'm going to use these models of, of illustration so that you can understand it better. We call it this model of illustration. Yes. So you start with the stimulus or the stimuli. We have speed and direction. Then you have position of the head. So what happens? You ha also have a receptor which is crystal and then the maculae. Then you have the location. Where are these cri these 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 receptors located? They are located in the ampulla of the semicircular canal. This one. And then this one is found in the circulars and the utriculars. Uh, let's try to describe what is happening. Say change in the speed and direction of the head stimulates the crystal found in the ampulla of the semicircular canal. Change in position of the head stimulates the maculae found in the saccharus and reticulus. The stimuli, meaning that the stimulus of this and the stimulus of this, the stimuli is converted into a nerve impulse, which is being transmitted along the auditory nerve to cerebellum for interpretation to restore balance simple change in the speed and direction of the head stimulates the crystal found in the ampulla of the semicircular canal comma change in the position of the head stimulates the maculae uh, found in the circulars and the utriculars the stimuli is being converted into a nerve impulse which is being transmitted along the auditory nerve to cerebellum for interpretation to restore balance. Sometimes they just bring question which is dealing with the direction, speed and direction. Sometimes it's just position. So if they bring speed and direction only, so you have to talk about this route, this route, this route, and then back. If they bring this, you have to talk about this route, this route to come like this, like this, then back. So if they bring the question which is generalizing the two of them then you have to give the answers yes that's a brief description of and a simple way of describing each point which is here is a mark so make sure that you don't miss each any of that then you have uh, hearing defects problems with the hearing number one we have what called a middle ear infection this is being caused by excess fluid in the middle ear due to pathogens due, due to the disease causing organisms like bacteria basically bacteria so how do you treat this you insert you call what you call a grommet the grommets are very important you do a small surgery you cut where the pus is coming from and then the pus will come out then the antibiotics because you're dealing with the bacteria then you have to apply with antibiotics so let's look at it this is the structure of a glomet. So if you, you it's the structure of the glomet, and then now the, 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 the fluid is built here. Yes, the fluid is built here. Sometimes due to, yes, the infection could be, you don't clean your ears, it could be just disease, it just bacteria just invaded your ear. But I advise you to keep your ears clean. So how they do, they cut here, and then they insert this glomet inside here. So once they insert it, now it allows it to look like this afterwards. Look like this. After being inserted, and then you turn this the tympanic membrane or what you call the eardrum, then the grommet is there. So because the pus is inside there, is inside here, yes, now the pus will come out through this grommet so that the pressure does not build and does not cause too much pain. Number two is its deafness. This one is the injury. It could be as a result of the injury of the ear. So the nerves or part of the brain responsible for that is being damaged. 
so number two you can also it can be as a result of hard works this is too much works in the ear so make sure that you clean your ears so that you don't develop that works then hardening of the ear tissue uh, this uh, such as oscos this one like the bones they cannot move from where they are so they harden they become hard and then what happens you can't you can't hear they can't cause the vibration so um, if such happens so what you need to do is you do what you call the hearing aids you there are some people who have the microphones they have the you see them on the, their ears as if they have a certain uh, earphones you think it's an earphone but it's basically it's being implanted on their body then you have the cochlear implants here you go direct you you do a surgery until the cochlea and then you implant there uh, a part which is going to help in converting the, the the stimulus into enough impulse so that the person can hear so basically that's it our next class is going to be human endocrine system don't forget to subscribe for free for the next lessons and then it will be helping you until you write your exams so each and every week new classes new information